I've been reading about pandemics in the past. You know, though, as they say, when if you've seen one pandemic, you've seen one pandemic. In other words, they're all very different. One thing they do have in common is they do tend to rip apart the social fabric. Institutions, ways of living together tend to fall apart. And one of the worst signs is scapegoating. In some pandemics they blame them on outsiders, in some they blame them on the doctors. In either case is helpful. And especially now as we're living more in isolation with social distancing. A lot of what created the social fabric is being worn thin. So we have to think about the qualities that can help mend the social fabric. And as usual, the Buddha has a list. There's six elements in the list. The first three have to do with goodwill, acts of goodwill, physical acts of goodwill, verbal acts of goodwill, mental acts of goodwill. The Buddha could have simply said acts of goodwill and made those three categories into one, but I think he really wanted to emphasize goodwill, 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 everything you do, not just ideas and chants or meditations. But when you act with your body, you move your body, try to do it with goodwill for yourself, for those around you. When you speak, don't open your mouth until you're sure that you're speaking out of goodwill. When you think of others, think of them with goodwill. Think of yourself with goodwill. Because without goodwill, society breaks down, even without pandemics. We can see this in the divisiveness that has led up to this point, that people have found that it's in their interest to keep people from talking to one another, to get people polarized. There are people who feel that the institutions of our society should be aimed only at making money. And they poo-poo the idea that they should be also engaged in helping with human values. This is what tears things apart, because it all lacks in goodwill. You think about the other people. Think about how they feel. Think about what their true happiness would be. You think about what your own true happiness would be. And when you think in terms of true happiness, you begin to realize it doesn't have to be a conflict. Because true happiness comes from within. So this is how we start with goodwill. We start with goodwill for ourselves, looking for true happiness inside. Realizing there will be frustrations, there will be disappointments outside, but those don't really matter. They come and they go. As the Buddha said, when you see someone who is totally miserable, a leper on the side of the road, not enough food to eat, not enough, enough shelter to, to protect from the elements, you've been there. You see people who are wealthy with way more than they need. You've been there too. As a John Fuang once said, when you think of some sensual pleasure that you would really like, it's a sign that you had it before, and now you miss it. Think about that for a bit, and it's enough to give a rise to a real sense of sanguega. Because if you do get it, well, you're going to lose it again, you're going to miss it again, and you'll try to find it again. It keeps going around and around and around. So true goodwill means that you're going to look for happiness somewhere else inside, in the qualities of the mind. So always keep in mind what it means to have goodwill, and then try to express it in your words, in your actions. Don't let your emotions take over, and don't let the news get you discouraged.
There are a lot of people suffering out there right now. We all have our own connections with people who are suffering. But the fact that we're able to meditate means that we've got an opportunity to do something good. Spread thoughts of goodwill around. You create a good energy around yourself that way. And the world needs more good energy of this sort. And it's what mends the social fabric. After all, human society was not based on goodwill. It wouldn't be a very desirable society to live in. People tend to forget that when they have other things, lots of things, lots of toys to play with. But when a crisis strips things away, Reminds of, reminds us of what's really valuable. And what makes social life, our shared life as human beings, livable is the goodwill we have for one another. That's why the Buddha emphasized goodwill, goodwill, goodwill at the beginning of his list of the things that create a sense of amiability, friendship. Or valuing one another. The next quality is sharing what you've got, whatever gains you have. Share them with others. Again, we see a fair amount of hoarding going on. And that too helps rip the fabric of society apart. Someone asked me yesterday about trying to find some things that would help build up resistance to the, the virus. As so I told him, make sure that when you get some of this, get some for your neighbors as well. Because you never know when you're going to have to depend on your neighbors. So when something special comes your way, don't take all of it for yourself. Make sure there's enough for others. The Buddha instructed senior monks always when there was a, a meal that they were invited to, that the senior meal should always make sure that everybody, all the way down to the last most junior monk, had enough. In the line of seniority, it is true that the most senior monks get first dibs, but that doesn't mean they should abuse that. You have to think about everybody else. Make sure everybody has a, has a good share. And that makes life a lot easier for everybody. When you're in need from help from other people, they'll be happy to give it. It's the hoarders who make things fall apart. So here again. Sharing is a basic human value that makes human society livable, creates the human social fabric. So especially in days like this, with things that are pulling the social fabric apart, we have to mend it as much as we can. So share. The next quality is having virtues that are in tune with one another. That doesn't mean everybody keeps a low level of virtue and makes sure everybody else keeps a low level of virtue. The Buddha talks about the virtues that are pleasing to the noble ones. As he says, in the Buddhist terms, he's said to be unspotted, untorn. In other words, all your precepts are whole. And you don't exalt yourself over the fact that your precepts are better than other people's. You follow the precepts because you know that's good for you. And when everybody is on the same wavelength as to what kind of behavior is acceptable and what's not, then we can live together easily. This can be extended to what, to what it's needed to be done to minimize the dangers of the, of the disease. But that then relates to the final quality, which is that we have 
right view in common. When your views are in common, then it's easy to speak, it's easy to understand one another. It's a happy place to be. And what does right view tell you? Okay, your important issues are in the mind. Aging, illness, and death will come. Separation will come. We can put up walls to defend against it, but then something's going to break them down. That doesn't mean we shouldn't put up the walls. In the Buddha's analogy, there's, there are diseases that will go away regardless of whether you have medicine. There are those that will go away only if you get medicine, and then there's those that won't go away even if you do get medicine. You don't know which category you fall into, so you take the medicine. In the same way, there are dangers that we can protect against, dangers that we don't know about. You protect against the ones that you can foresee, and you don't get discouraged. But at the same time, you realize that this is a holding action, and your real efforts have to be here in the mind. This is why even in the midst of the, the pandemic, meditation is the most important thing you can do. Because this is where your real treasures are, this is where your real refuge is. Finding that spot in the mind where things outside don't matter. Otherwise they eat away, eat away, eat away, eat away, even in your sleep. You have no chance to rest, no chance to pull yourself together. And you're going to wear out. And even if it doesn't lead to a disease in your part, it leads to unskillful behavior with the others. So both for your own sake and for the sake of those around you, look after your mind. You've got the breath. There's a lot that can be done with the breath. To soothe the body, to soothe the mind. Heal the body, heal the mind. Strengthen the body, strengthen the mind. And when we all see eye to eye on this, then it's a good society to live in. It does make it easier to share, because rem remember that physical survival is not the big issue. It's the survival of your goodness. And with that in mind, it's easier to share. It's easier to have goodwill to others. It's easier to have goodwill for yourself. This is why of the various qualities, right view is the most important. Notice that virtue and right view are listed in what the Buddha says are your most important possessions, the things that, if you lose them, are, are really serious loss. Whereas if you lose your wealth, you lose your health, even if you lose your relatives, it's not nearly as serious. After all, health, wealth, relatives, they come back in the large scheme of things. The people you love, as long as you're in samsara, you're going to meet them again. Wealth that's gone will come back again. Your health that's gone that can come back again. But when you lose your virtue, you lose your right views. It can sometimes be a very long and miserable time before you get them back. You've got them now. Protect them. These are the qualities also that the Buddha said are the foundations for mindfulness. And mindfulness, of course, is a foundation for concentration. It's when mending the social fabric. You're also putting together your own refuge, the foundation for your refuge, your own inner wealth, your inner strengths. And this is how looking after society, looking after those around you, protects you. Because the qualities that are good for society are really good for you as well. When you look at these things in these ways, there's no conflict. And when there's no conflict, then the mind can settle down in peace. and gain nourishment and strength from that peace. 
So remember, goodwill in your actions, physical actions, goodwill in your verbal actions, goodwill in your mental actions, sharing with one another, having a high level of virtue in common, having right view in common. These are the things that are good for us inside, and they mend the social fabric to keep it whole.